So let's take a look at today's lesson. We're going to be looking at uh, navigation and surveying day two. We're mostly going to be looking at surveying today. So there are some particular ways that the directions will usually be written in a surveying problem. They'll not always, but many times they use this kind of a notation, like a compass bearing. So north, 20 degrees east, and of course they measure with the vertical, which we know is the wrong way. We just have to keep in our mind. You know, I've spent a lot of time teaching you not to measure with the vertical, and now we have to, but we're going to, you know, go back to our norm after the, you know, application. So um, the north, 20 degrees east would look like this. The measurement would be here. If it was like north 50 degrees west, the measurement, we, again, notice we are measuring with the vertical. If it was south 30 degrees west, this would be what it would look like. So the, me the angle measure is going to be measured with either the north vertical line or the south vertical line. That's where the angle is going to be situated. Um, and so that's just a little bit of a different way for us to look at it. Yesterday we looked at bearings and today, you know, uh, like, 320, they're on a course of 320 degrees. Now we're looking at uh, compass readings. Are we okay with that? All right, so let's move to our example. All right, so very often land is taxed according to its area. Find the area of the given land. Now we're going to have to draw a picture just like we had to on the previous lesson. I you have an eraser handy because I typically will not like the angle measure I drew and I'll have to redraw it, you know, because we, not that we have to have our picture perfect, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate, it needs to be okay, it needs to be kind of good, right? So in other words, if I'm looking for, you know, going east, 195 feet east, I need to make sure it's a straight line, you know, a horizontal line. So let's start. So we're, here's our granite mark post. We're going to proceed 195 feet this way, so 195 east. Then along a bearing of south 32 degrees east. Okay, so here's where we draw our north line. And I need to go southeast, okay, southeast. And it needs to be 32 degrees, so maybe something like that. Now it's 260 feet, so the segment needs to be longer than my segment that's 195 feet. So I just need to, you know, be sure that it's a little bit longer. Um, so that's 260 feet. Then along a bearing of, so we need another north line. Then along a bearing of south 68 degrees west. Okay, so we're going south and west, southwest, and we're going 68 degrees. So I'm measuring 68 degrees with this um, vertical line, and what it would be kind of like that maybe, and we're going 385 feet. So this is needs to be much longer than the other two, and this is 68 degrees out here. Okay, and then where were we? So this was 32 degrees. Okay, then finally along a line back to Granite Post. Now, I think you may or may not be surprised, but many students tend to draw this line vertically and think that there's a right angle here. That would be a mistake. That was the co most common mistake is students kind of just want to put 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles everywhere. All right, so this is, there's no way that that's going to be a north line. Really, the only way we're going to have a vertical line is if they say it's like directly south or directly north. I mean, that's the only way. Otherwise, they're going to have, have some kind of a slant to them. Another thing that I've noticed is not putting all the information on the drawing, like the angle measures. I've noticed some students not putting information on there, so it's really important for us to put all the information that we can on the drawing so that we don't get stuck. All right, so let's see. So before we move on, we're going to have to decide where to draw to split it. We're going to have to split it into two triangles. And our choices are only from vertex to vertex. 
So I'm going to go ahead on a problem as complex as this, I usually label, so that would be A, that vertex is A, B, C, and D. Just so in my work when I, um, I'm writing things down, I know what I'm talking about. So we do know some other angles. I'm going to put them in a different color so that we recognize that these weren't given to us, that we read them off of the figure. Um, I know that this right here, so this is a north line, this is perfectly vertical. So I know that this angle measure is going to be 90 degrees, don't I? I know that that's going to be true because this was straight east, right? Because it was straight east, this is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, I know that. Now I need to look at the two parallel lines cut by a transversal thing. So let's look at our north lines. We have our north lines, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So I know that if this is 32 degrees, we know opposite interior angles are equal, right? So this is going to be 32 degrees and I'm going to write that there. Okay. So since I know this is 32 and this is 68, I actually could find that angle measure too, couldn't I? I could. You might as well put it on there. Uh, what is that? So if we do 68 uh, plus 32 minus, what is it, minus 180 or 180 minus all that, that angle measure is, what, 80. So that's about all the information that we can glean from the drawing at this point. We now have to decide where we're going to draw or how we're going to cut it into two triangles. I have had students, and I just want to please caution you against this, I've had students like draw lines to other locations like here and try to make this a right angle. That would be um, not a good idea. That would make it far more difficult and probably impossible. I don't know, I, we may be able to get around that, but it'd be pretty much impossible. So we need to just take the quadrilateral and cut it at one of the diagonals. Whichever one you pick, doesn't really matter. Um, I went ahead and I cut it this way. That's the way that I cut it, okay? Also another um, wrong assumption that students are making is that when I cut it like this, that this automatically bisects. That would be a bad assumption, right? I mean, w w the bisecting thing, that's a very specific theorem, right? There are a lot of things have to happen for it to actually bisect. Just to assume that because I drew a line and it looks like it bisected would be a bad assumption. Okay, so that's not going to happen. All right, so now that I have that, let's, um, what we want to do is we want to draw it so that we get the area of one of the triangles like right away, right? We want a side angle side. And that's why I chose this side angle side. So I can go ahead and find the area of that upper triangle and you know get off to a really good start. So the area of triangle ABC is one half times 195 times 260, right we got our side angle side, then sine of, so the 90 plus the 32 is my angle there, right? 90 plus 32 is 122, sine of 122 degrees. So we put this in our calculator and we're going to get uh, 21,498 point like zero one nine, et cetera. Now on this, these problems, even more than the others, we really have to store the numbers because if we start rounding in the middle here, we're going to be so off at the final answer that you're, you're just going to lose points. We don't want to do that. So. Um, I would typically write store or just write the letter. I usually put, I'm going to put store A. I'm going to store this as A. And just to make sure that we're comfortable with storing, I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to put this in and make sure we understand what I'm talking about because it's really important. Okay. So um, let's do that. Let's go to the calculator. Just kind of briefly. And I'm going to input that um, that we just did. Okay, so we have uh, one half, so 0 0.5 times 195 times 260 times sine of 122, and my uh, calculator is in degrees. Oh, we don't want 
Okay, sine of 122, there we go. And there's our 21,498. Now to store it, you would press this STO button, store. And I really only want you storing in the alpha keys. Never ever store in X, ever. X is like a revolving door. The calculator puts numbers in X depending on what a things that you do in the calculator. So if you store in X, it's like um, you are taking a big chance that your number is going to change. In fact, you probably already have something in X right now. If you pressed X and enter, it would probably give you a number because something is already stored in there unless you just cleared your calculator. So uh, we don't ever want to store in X. I stored that one in A. So alpha A, okay, I'm storing the answer in there. That means that whenever I use alpha A, it's, that number's going to be there. I can even put it in an equation and the number's going to be there. It'll be fine. Okay, are we okay with storing? That is like real critical to us. So just store in these green alpha keys, you know, A, B, C, somewhere down there. Don't store in X. All right. It's right down here, this STO, it's right above the on button this store button right here. So we hit store and then alpha wherever we want to put it. Okay, any other questions about storing? Okay, so let's keep moving on. So we have that stored. All right, so now our job is to find the area of this bigger triangle. And we need side angle side. Um, I've had some students try to use Heron's formula it's possible, but I would really avoid it. I really would avoid it. There's a lot of numbers going on, real difficult. Just find a side angle side. Okay, I already have this side, and I think it'd be pretty easy to find this side, wouldn't it? I already have a lot of information on this triangle. So why don't we go ahead and find this side AC? Let's use, um, let's see, let's use law of cosines to find AC. So AC squared equals 195 squared plus 260 squared minus 2 times 195 times 260 cosine of what was that 112 no 122 cosine of 122 So we put that in our calculator, you know, let our calculator do all its lovely work, square root the number that we get, and we find that segment AC is 399.198, and of course I stored this as C. I actually write those notes on my paper so that I remember where I stored things because if I don't, I'm going to forget because there's a lot of letters, right? I mean, could have, I could have put it anywhere. So you don't have to write the word store. In fact, I normally don't. I'm writing that for you. I would just put a C and I would put a circle around there so that I would remember what, where it was. All right, so we have that. Great, we have the two sides. Now we're faced with finding this angle. And no, this angle is not going to be 40 degrees, is it? This is not a bisecting. It's not bisecting. So let's think about what strategy we may use to find, we need this angle. So what do you think we could do to find this angle? Yeah, maybe go back to our triangle that we know a lot of information on. Why don't we do a law of sines and we find this angle right here, this ang angle alpha, or you can call it angle ACB, I mean, however, however you want to name it. Let's find that. Uh-huh. So if this angle measure along the line is 180 degrees and I, I used up 68 down here and 32 down here, I add 68, 32, sub subtract from 180 and I get 80. Okay? So let's, um, let's work on this angle right here, angle ACB. Um, A, okay. So we're going to do sine of... What do we have? 122 degrees, sine of 122 degrees over our AC that we just found, you know, the 399, etc. You could even write C down here and circle it. I mean, instead of writing the number, we, you just designated what you were going to call this. So it's possible for you just to write a C down there instead of the 399, whatever. It's up to you. That's like a little bit of a shortcut that we will be doing in calculus. 
So that's going to equal um, sine of, let's uh, AC, let's see, angle ACB over 195. Okay, so then we do our calculator work. You should be really comfortable with this by now, right? Cross multiply, doing all those things. Um, and we're going to get that angle ACB is 24.472. Of course, we keep it stored. Now, that's this angle, this angle alpha. We want this one. So to find, you know, angle ACD, what would we do? We would take 80 degrees and we would subtract the 24.472, right? That's what we would do to get our angle that we really want, that we're really interested in, the ACD angle. Okay, so we do that, we subtract that, and we get 55.472. I stored this as D. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a second. Am I going too fast? Are we all okay? All right, so now we have our side angle side. We're excited. We finally have side angle side on the second triangle. Um, so let's do our area. So the area of triangle ACD is going to be 1 half times 385 times the 399, etc. sine of the 55. And you could just put a C there and a D there if you wanted to, since you already labeled what they were. And in fact, that's what you would do in your calculator. When you input this in your calculator, you're going to be putting a C in for this number and a D in for that number so that you don't have to like copy down a bunch of numbers. All right, so we do that and we get our area is 63,351.423. Now, we stored our original area, right, of the top triangle. We're going to go back and we're going to pull that we're going to take this area and we're going to add it to our stored number in A. Right, so the area for the total is going to be 84,849.442 feet squared. So that's our total area right there. Now there will be times when they want you to convert it to acres. I'm certainly not expecting you to memorize the conversion for acres. Right, I would give it to you on a quiz or a test. So I'm going to write down one of the conversions. So one acre is equal to 43,560 feet squared. So that's just one of the conversions that you might need to use to convert. Okay. So how are we with this lesson? Are there any questions?